Oh, oh sorry. Morning, folks. Um, uh, van tour video. Let me just put the bed up and then we'll start. Okay, okay. let's begin. Hey, welcome to Motoring Home. This is the episode that everybody's been waiting for. That sounds egotistical. Uh, but really, it's the full van tour video. So this is my Peugeot Boxer 2012 uh, L4 H3, which means it's the longest and highest version. And his name is Jean-Luc. features on the outside of the van. Uh, the first thing you'll notice is the um, the window that we put in on the outside and this is a really heavily tinted glass so when the door is shut you can't see in but I can see out. I've got curtains too just in case but uh, it also has a sliding function for when I'm cooking to make sure I can let air out. That's cool. We've got another one of those on the back. Yeah again heavily tinted but with a curtain too. Uh, because when the lights are on and it's dark outside, people can still see it. So we definitely need a curtain. All right, so to um, extend the living space, especially in the summer, I bought the Fiamma four meter long awning. So it goes from pretty much the whole length of the van. And it's really easy with this winder just to, to pop right on out. It comes with its legs for support. legs on you can throw it out a little bit further it goes a full two and a half meters out so there so there's loads of space uh, especially on a barbecue in the summer this is the door ladder so we can get on top to see the solar panel here we go here's my 200 watt solar panel that runs down through the junction box just here and uh, that goes into the MPPT charger, which I will show you inside. There's also my uh, my fan vent there for the kitchen and the flue from the water heater, along with all my lovely security lights. So I've got surround lights that mean uh, I can switch them on from both the cab and the back. So if I hear some noises at night and I need to scare somebody, I can just bang those bad boys on. This is the electrical hookup. So in here, I have... Um, a lead inside which has an adapter that can go to 240 household power then hook up the van which will help uh, charge the batteries via the smart charger that I've got and I've also got some 240 plug, uh, plug sockets in the van that will run off uh, the electric hookup and won't run off the, the batteries. Then we can see we have the fan vent for the bathroom to make sure that uh, if it gets a bit steamy in there we can air it out and then this is the water filler cap for the toilet flush and this is the access door to the toilet cassette where I keep my toilet chemicals and the cassette just comes in and out nice and easy the only other thing I installed of note are the wind deflectors on the windows which means I have the windows down on the motorway because there's no AC all right there's Jean-Luc let's take a look at some of the cool features of the van uh, I'll try and show you everything here you can see what I was talking about with the curtains to make sure that uh, no one can see me when I've got the lights on inside and I'm dancing around naked. The first thing you'll notice is the 80 litre fridge. I bought this uh, second hand because these things cost so much money brand new because it's the 12 volt DC fridge rather than a three way. But it means it operates just like a household uh, refrigerator and it doesn't lose loads of cold air as soon as you open it. The portable barbecue, probably the most important thing in the van take a look at these lights these are LED filament lights and this might do the camera weird but um, 
you can see the filament in there. So I think they're a really cool touch along with the, the, the brass holders there. As we move further into the van, you can see on the side here is my surfboard, which is just rigged up with bungee cords so it can come off really easily. These bungee ropes are one of the, the best things I bought for the van and I'll show you where they've, else they've been used in a minute. Come on through. This is the sofa, but also the spare bed. So this actually all slides out and I've got a little time lapse to show you of that. It moves out and it's the guest bed. It could be a little close. Um, as you can see, if the bed was coming down right now, the bottom of the bed's here. So it is pretty close. You know, you gotta be careful not to bump your head. show you that in a little bit this also acts as storage so under here you see I've got all my tools for the van my electrical hookup cable uh, goes in here too along with loads of shoes and stuff and also if you come in really close you can see the two vents here for the air heater that I run and it's an LPG uh, air heater and it is the heat source 2000 I believe the other storage unit is here and I made sure I've installed it with sliding doors because then the doors don't open and you can still walk through the van while having access to, to all the stuff in the cupboards. And these are just clothes, barbecue kit. And in the other one, uh, it's all kitchen, kitchen stuff. So slide it. One of my favorite parts of the van is on top of this unit, a resin river table um, countertop that I did and there's another video, uh, a full video of how I did this on the channel but also it's got a cool feature that just behind it there's like a, a groove where I can store all sorts of things um, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of perfect for most of the knickknacks that I've got in the van and then there's another shelf for other things there almost everything in this van has a dual purpose uh, because trying to save space but most of the things on here that don't have a dual purpose are literally just in there I suppose they do have a dual purpose because they stop everything from moving around. Here, does your van have a mini arcade machine? I think it doesn't. <laughs> okay, uh, moving on. Let's have a look at some of the electrics. So uh, I thought it was important in the van to have uh, plenty of USB sockets. So I've got one here on its own switch, but all of the plug sockets that I've installed in the van, and there's two over here as well, uh, you can see. They all have a USB ports for, for charging. Now, two of these sockets are hooked up to the inverter and therefore the batteries, and two of them are hooked directly to the electric hookup. So two of them don't operate unless I'm hooked up to the electric, but the other two do at any time when I wanna switch on the inverter, I can run power off two of these uh, sockets. This is the MPPT charger that's connected to the solar panels. So it's a really efficient charger and that takes power from the sun and throws it into the, the batteries. I've got a battery monitor up here. It's probably too light for you to see the, um, the indicator, but uh, it's showing full power at the moment because the solar panel is charging. And one other really cool thing is my amp and my Bluetooth surround sound, which I can switch on and at any moment bang out some tunes oh yeah loud huh cool anyway can't play too much of that otherwise i get pulled off youtube this is my electrical cupboard and i might need the gopro for this so here i've got two 200 amp hour batteries connected together uh the amp is just up here you'll hopefully be able to see but this unit here is the smart charger, which means when I'm hooked up to the uh, to mains power, it's gonna rejuvenate and extend the life of these two batteries by doing a, a prolonged charge. So that's really important to have um, just to keep the battery life up to scratch. But most of the time, this is being charged by the solar panels. And also I've got a split VSR relay. So when the van is running, the engine alternator charges these batteries. Uh, it's also two way, so the solar panels, when these are full, will also charge the engine battery, which is pretty sweet. This is my wardrobe, a storage cupboard, but also in here, which is connected as well, is my 
uh, mobile Wi-Fi dongle, which is pretty cool. So I've got Wi-Fi wherever I go. And it's just another storage box and stuff in there. This is pretty cool. This is a removable chopping block, which I take outside for barbecues. This is really nice. That combined with the table that I store up here means I can uh, take my life outside. And this is the oven. So this is a Thetford duplex oven. It's designed for, for motor caravans, so it fits perfectly into the van. The only other storage cupboard I haven't shown you yet is this, which is, keeps all my um, cleaning products uh, and oil for the van and a few other bits and bobs um, for keeping the van tidy. Oh, check this out. This is a, uh, I mean, ignore all the flies in the screen. I tried to clean it once, it was pretty hard work, but this is a fan vent and it blows both in and out so when I'm cooking I can suck air out of the van and um, when it's hot in the summer I can blow cool air in. This is the the main kitchen unit I got this sink and hob unit from a uh, caravan that got broke uh, broken down So um, I bought that as one unit. And um, if I show you in here and the inner workings of the, of the van here, let's get some light in. So this is my gas low uh, 11 kilogram LPG tank. And I bought it with all the adapters for Europe. So there's a British and some of the European adapters for filling up the LPG uh, while I'm on the road. As you can see, it goes into a, a, a gas manifold here and goes to all the appliances. So um, I believe this this is a spare one so if i ever have a, a gas barbecue or anything on the go uh, one of these goes to my lpg heater the other one goes to the oven the other one goes to the hob and then the straight through one here goes to the water heater which you can see up here this is my morco um, water heater which i'll show you operating in a little bit the other things to to note under here the fresh water tank which is connected if you can see down here to the uh, Sureflow Trail King water pump. Can you see that one? And that pumps water through the whole system and I've got hot and cold running water at the sink. Um, I've got a cold water outdoor tap and it connects to this hose lock. And then the outdoor tap there, which I can use to clean the wetsuit and uh, take outdoor showers if I want to. And it's also, if you take a look at this, the water gets pumped through this accumulator, which helps the water flow continuously rather than all jittery as the pump goes. Because if you listen to the pump, the water will come out all jittery, but it's the accumulator which allows the, the water to flow out normally like it would from a household tap. Here is something really special. And that is a full wet room in my self-built van. Above you is the shower. There's the hot and cold shower. It's a low flow shower, which is perfect for the uh, seven liters per minute that the pump can do. This is the fan vent. So that operates just like the kitchen fan vent does and helps keep steam out. And the toilet just down there is the Thetford uh, toilet. And it's got, I'm gonna step in so you can see stuff. This thing swivels. So it can move out of the way a little bit. So when I'm showering, I've got more room. Um, but it opens up, it's, there's a catch around the back which allows the toilet to be locked off so smells don't get out. And then this is the flush. That's pretty cool, right? So here we go. And there's a shower curtain to make sure no water comes out of the door while I'm showering. So yeah, that's the bathroom. As I turn on the hot water, that thing should, you see in there? Flame on. Cool. Uh, that's the water heater. Uh, the only other thing left to show you is, um, I'd say even cooler than the bathroom, than the wet room, and that is my bed, which is above us right now. The idea of putting the bed 
in the ceiling was because I wanted to be able to walk freely from the front to the back of the van uh, without having to clamber over the bed. And it's at th this height, so that uh, just shy of six foot, I can walk underneath it without banging my head uh, while wearing shoes. The, the high van allowed me to get 18 centimeters of mattress plus a 25 mil thick ply that's on. Uh, all of the insulation in the roof and the cladding, all that fits above my head and I still got room to move, which is great. And then also when I sit up in bed, uh, I've got it so that I don't knock my head, so I can sit up upright in bed. And that's why the um, brackets are exactly this high. Ideal. So, I'll show you how it works. Crank handle. Goes on. Here. Take it off the attachment, get it nice and tense, so it's supporting the weight of the bed. Then we take these off here. Now all of these bed brackets are bolted into this structural framework of the van, so they're really solid. And these brackets down here, A pair can hold 500 kilos. Now the structure of the van probably can't hold 500 kilos, so they're stronger, but four of them, and I don't weigh more than 100 kilos, so four of them can definitely hold me in the bed, no problem. And a guest, who's holding the camera right now. <laughs> Head into bed, here we go. If you really want to set the mood, you can always put on your disco lights because you know every van's got to have disco lights. Sweet. Right, there we have it. That's um, Jean-Luc, the fully off-grid mobile home, motor home, motoring home, get it? With, uh, yeah, solar panels, uh, LPG heater, a full wet room, an up and down lower in bed. I mean, what more could you want? And somebody who's freezing her butt off to come with me. He's been holding the camera hold the whole time. Thanks so much. I wanted to show you guys, now that we've got the door shut so it's a, a little darker, my outdoor lighting, which I hook over the awning um, sometimes uh, in the evenings. So I made sure that I had some uh, 12 volt DC connectors built into the van here so that I could connect things like this to it. And then string these lights outside. So it's like uh, I have outdoor lighting as well as, as, as indoor lighting, which I think is pretty cool. And the good thing is as well, is these bulbs right here, unscrew and go right into here, just like that. <laughs> Magic. All right, folks, time for bed. Like I said before, I can sit up in bed without smacking my head on the ceiling too. So I think the bed is in the perfect position. Very important there, carbon monoxide alarm. Right, folks that's the end of the video thanks so much for watching i really hope you enjoyed it and um, if you want to check out the full start to finish time lapse video of the van that is now up on the channel too along with lots of individual videos of the the different processes uh different things i've built in the van like the resin river table the wet room and the bed so yeah i hope you're inspired to do your own build if you are 
do what I did and download Mike Hudson's PDF booklet. He is the van dog traveler and uh, he did a book on how to build his van and that's the template I used to make mine. So yeah, uh, please like and subscribe to the channel to uh, stay up to date with videos and I will see you next time on Motoring Home.